Is your dental health affecting your medical health? Chances are the answer is yes, and you don't even know it. Nothing hurts, no pain. Here's Debbie's story. Debbie had a little pimple on her thigh. It grew into an abscess with a lot of pain. So she went to see her doctor. The doctor put on antibiotics. The abscess went away. And then it came back. Put on antibiotics a second time. The abscess went away. And then it came back. Third time, they decided, we need to culture this and find out what we're dealing with. When the results from the lab came back, guess what they were dealing with? It was oral bacteria. Debbie had a dental infection, didn't have any pain. She hadn't seen a dentist for years because there was no reason to. She didn't have any pain. She's healthy, right? Well, the doctors recommend she gets a dental exam. So when I examined Debbie, we found three abscess teeth, three, with no pain. Well, the doctors recommended that, that, that she follow up on, this, on, on the, the exam. The doctors never suspected her mouth because she didn't have any pain. Looks like her dental health had a lot more to do with her medical health than she ever realized. How about this story? My son has been hearing me talk about the oral systemic connection for years. At work, he ran into a fellow that was talking about the heart attack they had the year before. He was only 34 years old. They did open heart surgery on him. The surgeon told him afterwards what caused his heart attack. It was a tooth infection, a dental abscess, with absolutely no pain. Well, now he's got a big scar going down his chest, but today he's taking really good care of his teeth. My son's an even bigger believer now. Seeing is believing. There are over 630,000 deaths a year in the United States from heart attacks. That's a lot. Some researchers believe that 50% of those heart attacks are triggered by dental infections. That's over 300,000 deaths a year in the United States caused by preventable dental infections. We have to pay attention. The United States Surgeon General back in the year 2000 wrote a big report that basically says you need a healthy mouth to have a healthy body. Just because something doesn't hurt doesn't mean it's okay. Did you know that 90% of dental infections have absolutely no pain? That's right, no pain. Gum disease doesn't hurt. Most tooth infections don't either. People are really surprised to find that most dental infections don't hurt, yet we quickly accept the fact that High blood pressure doesn't hurt, diabetes doesn't hurt, glaucoma, cancer, they don't hurt. Just because something doesn't hurt doesn't mean it's healthy. Now, I'm a dentist, and I like pain. <laughs> now, I never, ever like to cause pain. We'll do everything we can not to cause pain. But pain is the best motivator I have ever found. If you don't have any pain, how do you know you have a, a dental infection or not? Well, you see a good dentist for a good dental exam and find out. Have you ever put off going to the dentist because nothing hurt? Ah, you're not alone. The number one reason people don't see a dentist isn't pain or expense. It's lack of pain. Nothing hurts. I'm fine. I don't need to see the dentist. That's why I like pain. It's a wonderful motivator. Would you please raise your hand if you're over 30? You see out there? Okay, over 30. Right. I'm, my hand's up too. According to the Center for Disease Control, 47% of Americans over the age of 30 have gum disease. Gum disease. And if you're over 65, that jumps to over 70% who have gum disease. Gum disease is an infection in the gums, dumping harmful bacteria right into the bloodstream. There's no pain, no indication you have it, other than your gums may bleed a little bit when you brush your floss. All infections, including gum disease, produce pus. Yeah, what's pus, right? That white creamy stuff? Well, what's it made of? It's made of harmful bacteria, dead tissue debris, dead white blood cells, inflammatory proteins, and some other toxins. Well, where does the pus go? Well, it either drains out or it drains in. If it drains out, you see it. You clean that mess up. When you pop a pimple, that's pus. When it drains in, you never see it. Oh, where does it go? It's absorbed into the bloodstream. Oh, that's nice. Well, from there, where does it go? Well, it works its way to the heart, to the lungs, back to the heart, and it's pumped through the whole body. If you think pus being pumped through your body 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for weeks, months, or even years is healthy, think again. 
The bacteria in gum disease have already been proven to cause cardiovascular disease. That's huge. That is, that's, a, that's a big statement right there. Cardiovascular disease triggers heart attacks and strokes. Heart attacks are the number one killer in the United States. Strokes are the leading cause of disability. Gum disease and diabetes have a bidirectional relationship. That means when your gum disease is bad, so is your diabetes. When your gum disease improves, your diabetes improves. Researchers are finding oral bacteria in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. Rheumatoid arthritis is affected by the body's inflammatory response to dental infections. Oral bacteria affect pregnancy complications, from preterm births to stillborns. Our teeth and gums are major players in our body's health. Think your dental health doesn't matter? Think again. Let's talk about medications. Melissa's a nurse. The only medication she was on was for high blood pressure. She went to the doctor, they took her blood pressure, it was high. So they gave her some pills. Her blood pressure went down. Everything's okay, right? Well, when we examined Melissa, we found an abscess on her lower left molar. Big old abscess, no pain. Felt a little bit different, but didn't have any pain. So we put her on antibiotics, and a few days later, removed a hopeless tooth. She came back in about three weeks and said, Hey, guess what? I don't need my blood pressure medication anymore. Can a dental infection raise your blood pressure? <laughs> Absolutely. An infection anywhere in our body can raise our blood pressure. Our body is fighting the infection. We have to find and eliminate the source of the disease, not just treat the symptom. Physicians were never trained to ask for a dental health report from their patient's dentist. Maybe a dental health report should be included with a complete physical exam. If we examine the mouth, we just might discover the source of some of the diseases our doctors are continuing to treat with numerous medications. It's worth a good oral exam. Think dental health isn't affecting your medical health? Think again. When the doctor tells you you've got an infection somewhere in your body, I don't care, your heart, your lungs, your brain, anywhere in your body, our first question should be, where did the bacteria come from? Unless we have open cuts, wounds, sores, somewhere in our body, there's a real good chance they're coming in right through our body's front door, our mouth. If we can keep our mouth really clean, we're helping to remove or eliminate bacteria that have already been proven to cause or affect heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, pregnancy complications, and they're adding more to the list every year. Think dental health is important? Think again. I'm going to share with you three simple steps you can do to have a healthy mouth. And maybe help avoid some of these horrible diseases. Step number one, begin at home. Thoroughly clean your teeth every day at home. Think you already are? Think again. I've been looking at your mouth for 40 years. <laughs> I can guarantee you the vast majority of you are not doing near as good a job as what you think you are. It takes a lot more time to thoroughly clean your teeth than it does money. It takes five to ten minutes to thoroughly clean your teeth. You can't do a good job in two or three minutes. The average person spends 30 seconds or less. We have to be better. Thoroughly cleaning our teeth one time a day is much healthier than doing a, a mediocre or a so-so job several times a day. Now, thoroughly cleaning our, our teeth is a lot harder than we think. Now, I'm not about to tell you the best way for you to clean your teeth, because I don't know what's going to work best for you. Personally, I'm not hung up on technique. I could care less. I'm hung up on results. The object is to get the bacteria off the teeth without damaging the tooth or the gums. There are a lot of right ways. And there are a lot of wrong ways. I like an electric toothbrush, but you can use a manual one. It just takes longer. I like directed water irrigation but you can use dental floss or those little brushes that fit in between the teeth. Bacteria love to hide where a toothbrush can't reach. Go to the store, go online, look at the different products that are available. Find out what works best for you and use it. Because step two is to grade yourself. If you ever take a test and it's never graded, how do you know how well you did? You don't, okay? Plaque is the same color as your teeth. How do you know you got it off? This is how you can tell. 
This is called disclosing solution or disclosing tablets. Some of you know what they are. They stain the bacteria on your teeth. You can, it's available over the counter or online, and it's really inexpensive. Now, don't use this before you're heading out the door, the door to go somewhere. <laughs> it's going to give you red lips and a purple tongue for a little while. But here's how you use it. Clean your teeth as thoroughly as you can. So in your mind, you have done a great job. Now chew up one of these tablets, or switch, paint it on with the, some of the solution. Then take your tongue and swish it all over the place. Rinse your mouth out with some water. Now go look in the bathroom mirror. Go look inside there. Get a flashlight if you need to. Look inside. Wherever there is stain on your teeth is where you still have bacterial plaque. That doesn't mean you didn't brush there. That just means you didn't get the bacteria off. Now go back and clean the bacteria off. This is when you begin to learn what it really takes to thoroughly clean your teeth. It's a lot harder than we think. That's why it takes five to 10 minutes. If our kids can learn how to thoroughly clean their teeth, you're gonna save a lot of money on dental expenses. Plus, you just might have some healthier kids. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Now, our job, is to be the example. That means we have to spend five to 10 minutes ourselves thoroughly cleaning our teeth every day. Our kids learn a lot more from what we do than what we say. Now step three, to see a good dentist for a good dental exam and do whatever it takes to have a healthy mouth. When I look on the highway, not everybody's driving a Cadillac, but everybody needs transportation. When it comes to your dental care, you don't need a Hollywood smile to have a healthy mouth, but you need a healthy mouth to have a healthy heart. There are many different options you have. You've got different choices. Find out what they are. Taking care of your dental health is not selfish. It's smart. You can have a healthy mouth for a whole lot less than it costs to stay in the hospital for one to two days. Not to mention the cost of time missed from work or from school, plus the emotional pain for the whole family. Now you may have to make a financial investment in your dental health. That's okay. But only if you're willing to spend that five to 10 minutes every day thoroughly cleaning your teeth. Otherwise, you're just throwing your money away. Think your dental health isn't important? Think again. It's absolutely necessary for complete medical health. Debbie, didn't have, Debbie had pain. That drove her to see the doctor. Melissa came in without any pain. Both of them had dental issues causing medical issues. Neither of them knew it. How about you? Do you have a dental issue causing a medical issue right now and don't know it? If you raise your hand earlier, there's a good chance you just might. We need to begin connecting the dots between our mouth and the rest of our body. The Surgeon General was right. We need a healthy mouth to have a healthy body. If this information makes sense to you, I'm gonna ask you to please share it with your physician, your family, and your friends, no matter where they live. Dental health affects the medical health of everybody. So you didn't think your dental health was this important, did you? Think again. Thank you.